Welcome to Unit 1 of the TESOL course at Southern Utah University. We'll cover the TESOL umbrella. We'll talk about a variety of TESOL acronyms and then describe how those acronyms represent different contexts for teaching and learning English. You may have heard of some of these terms before. ESL, EFL, TEFL, TOEFL are all part of the field of TESOL. TESOL serves an umbrella term for all of these other terms. What is an umbrella term? The umbrella term is a larger, more general term that encompasses a variety of different, more specific terms. So in this case, TESOL is an umbrella term for these and many more acronyms. Let's take a look at some of these acronyms uh, in more specific contexts. So for instance, TESOL. TESOL stands for Teaching English as a Second Language. TEFL stands for Teaching English as a Foreign Language. What's the difference between a second language and a foreign language? It has to do with the situation where you're learning the language. Here's an easy way to remember. So second and survival both start with S. When you're learning a second language, you need it for daily survival because you are living in a country or a place where that second language is needed to satisfy your daily needs. In contrast, F and F uh, can stand for both foreign and fun. When you learn a foreign language, you're generally in a country where that foreign language isn't necessary for survival. You may be learning it for fun or for work or school purposes, but it's not a survival language. It's more of a fun language. So someone learning English in the United States would be learning English as a second language. Someone learning English in China would probably be learning English as a foreign language. So that's the distinction between ESL and EFL. Here's some other related terms. In some countries, they want to better recognize that English isn't just a, a learner's second language, it may be their third or fourth language. So the term EAL, English as an additional language, is used to better recognize that English is just one of many languages that are being learned. The term ELF, English as a lingua franca, um, tries to better recognize how English is being used by um, between speakers who do not speak English as a native language. A lingua franca is a language that two groups or more uh, adopt the language in common that they will use to communicate with one another, even though it's not the language, native language of any of those groups. And so increasingly, English has become a lingua franca around the world that people use it to communicate with each other when they don't know um, each other's native language. Related to this is English as an international language, or EIL, and the idea behind EIL is that it recognizes that English is a global language, and that it tries to focus on a more universally understood English, rather than focusing on an English that's very specific to a particular country or region. So EIL tries to um, be more uh, flexible with pronunciation and vocabulary, but still focus on being understood in a wide range of contexts. Here are some other more specific situations for learning English. ESP, English for Specific Purposes. ESP refers to um, a form of the language that is used to accomplish a specific task or a specific occupation. So for example, um, at uh, Southern Utah University, we have an aviation program and aviation English is an important form of ESP, um, where people from around the world use English to communicate in that field. But they learn a more narrow form of English that is just used for aviation purposes. Many international students at Southern Utah University learn English for academic purposes. Um, they learn the kind of English that is used to study, write papers, and uh, engage in classroom discussion. But it doesn't cover other aspects of English, such as shopping or family interactions or home interactions. So academic English is focused on the university environment. Here is another term um, that I came across mostly through my interactions with uh, kindergarten through high school or K through 12 uh, instructors. They use the term L or English language learners to describe learners in the field of English language learning. We've also already talked about TESOL, uh, teaching English to speakers of other languages as a field of study, but it's also the name 
of a professional organization for teachers, the TESOL International Association. Additionally, the term TESOL is used to describe the annual conference of members of this association. So TESOL could describe a field of study, a professional organization, and also an academic and professional conference. So in this video, we've provided an overview and an introduction to a variety of TESOL acronyms and described how they match different contexts for learning and teaching English.